Greetings gamers, my name is Anto and today I want to walk you through my GM journal that I've been using to run my in-person sessions. This video is sponsored by Che Paku, more on them later. Now I recently started playing in person again after a long period of absence thanks to the pandemic and things and one thing that I really wanted to do coming back to playing in person was really decouple myself from that digital mindset and sever my ties with my laptop and things like that and go back to the analog roots of playing games like D&D. So I decided to put together a GM journal and I've really been enjoying it. I've been enjoying running games with it, but I've also really enjoyed the process of building it and prepping games in it. So today I wanna to give you a little tour of it, show you how I made it, show you how I use it and kind of encourage you to make one yourself. There'll be links for you to find everything that I've used to make this down in the description below, but without further ado, let's dive into it. So jumping down onto the desk here, this is the journal. This is an A5 six ring binder. If I open this up here, you can see immediately loads of stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and start with, I have to take this out, so we'll start with this. This is the TikTok pencil. If you're on TikTok at all, you may have seen this. It's an infinite pencil. I picked it up for like 50 cents and it's just been really useful. So I keep it in the GM binder to make notes. It unscrews and has a little eraser built in, which is really handy. And I use this for scratching down notes during my sessions. Then I also keep a four color biro pen inside my GM binder as well. I use this mainly when I'm planning out my sessions. So before the session, and I use the color coding of it to note down different things. So black is for my usual color coding, but then I use blue to denote locations, green to denote characters, and red to denote monsters. So while I'm doing my planning, I can change the color for different things. And then when I'm looking at it for my session prep, I can see what different things are really easily at a glance. So let's dive into the meat of this. As you can see, it's a six ring binder. I wanted to go with something that wasn't set because I wanted the ability to change absolutely everything as I grow and evolve. In my mind, this is an ongoing thing that will always be changing. So I wanted full freedom and flexibility to do that. So we're gonna work our way left to right. First things first, in the little pockets here, you can see that I've got the 5e monster cards. Now these are amazing. I can't believe that I didn't start using these sooner. They make running, 5e so much easier than carrying around the big book. I picked up a set of the NPCs and creatures as well as the 0 to 5 CR range creatures because the 5e game I'm running at the minute is really low level. So it's really useful when you're planning your games instead of taking the monster manual with you if I'm going to be running a game of 5e I can plan out what I need and I can say right I'm going to be running X, Y, and Z monsters, I grab the cards, I put them in here, I don't need to bring the book with me. And that's one of my big goals with this, is I don't wanna be carrying the books with me. Ideally, if I was running a theater of the mind session, this is all I wanna to bring to the table, this and a set of dice. Next up in this little pocket here, we've just got a bunch of stickers. This is from a journal that I use. I got these just to be able to mark down things in the journal here so that we can make it look a little prettier. I wanted something that was a little bit more aesthetic than just plain white papers. You can see here, that's why we've got a title page that you can see I've got some artwork here. I've also got a whole bunch of cutouts of more artwork in the cover here to use when I'm making up new pages. All this artwork is taken from a fantasy art book that I've had for a long time. It's just one of those coffee table books that's got a bunch of different fantasy art in it. I picked it up for like five bucks in a discount bookstore years ago and I've never done anything with it. I just picked it up because it had pretty art in it, but now I cut pages out, cut pieces of art that I like out and I'm using it as section dividers and to just sprinkle throughout this just to make it look a little nicer and then I've gone ahead and I've got some textured paper and some washi tape just throughout just to make it look a little nicer and to make it a little more pleasant to kind of read through. So you can see here's the, the back of that page from the fantasy art book and then you can see here I've printed off some PF2 versions of the monster cards here for a recent game that I was running. I needed some basic NPCs and I really didn't want to have to cart the massive monster book to and from the game night so I just printed off a couple of them made little cards for them. I would buy the official Pathfinder ones but they're so expensive. I wish Paizo would release them in smaller packs because they are just 
they're bonkers expensive. Then we come to my GM screen section. So this is where I keep all the information I want while I'm running the game. So this is predominantly for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. I haven't set up one for 5th Edition yet because I run Pathfinder much more frequently than I run 5e these days. But I've got it laid out here. I made this in Affinity Publisher. And you can see I've got all the, the basic DCs by level, some summaries of basic actions, a quick monster builder to give me what kind of damages and armor class for monsters by level in case the players come across something and I need just to make a monster on the fly or to make an NPC on the fly for a combat. I've got the encounter builder and the encounter budget as well as magic item pricing and the rules for treat wounds because those are things that come up in my game really frequently. Then I've got a list of all of the conditions because there are a lot of conditions in PF2 and I'm still not 100% with all of them so I like to keep a list of them just to remind myself of what those are. Then I've got a list of all of my player character skills so I keep a list of their perception and their initiative, their hit points, their AC, all of their different skill bonuses. So when I am running at the table, if I want to suddenly decide to throw some kind of trap at them, I can look at what all of their reflex saves are, for example, and I can use that to determine what I think an appropriate DC for the trap should be based on their real skills and know that, okay, that's what their average reflex is among the real players in this group. So I can set the DC based on that, or I can use the DC by level table a couple pages before. Then I've got some tables for pricing for goods and services, runes and scrolls, because that comes up quite frequently. And then this is one of the most useful things that I think any game master can keep in a GM binder is a list of names. So quite frequently, I will throw random NPCs at the players and they might ask a name. And if I haven't got anything prepped, it's really useful to be able to pull up this list and just pick a name and then scratch it off when I'm done and keep on going, make a note of it in my notes as I go on. Then we have my initiative table and just a simple piece of note paper to make scratch notes while I'm running combat. I have a little piece of plastic here that I use to dry erase initiative save me having to print off my initiative tracker every single time. That makes it really handy when we're running initiative to be able to just write down the players' names next to the numbers. It speeds things up a little bit, saves me having to use a dedicated tracker and I can wipe it off easily enough because it's on this piece of plastic. Today's video is sponsored by Chepeku and their amazing hand-drawn maps. Anytime I don't want to draw my own map and I need a map for my online games, Chepeku are the first place that I go to. With a library of more than 4,000 high-quality hand-drawn maps, Chepeku is the absolute best place to go to look for maps for your next game night. Each map pack comes with a ton of variety for things like seasons, time of day, weather effects, and so much more. So no matter what kind of game you're playing, there's a really good chance that a Chepeku map is gonna work for you. Not only that, but at the higher tiers of their Patreon, you can also get access to great animated maps, which are amazing for creating heightened immersion, especially if you're running on a VTT. Chepeku maps work seamlessly with most popular VTTs, and you can also get versions available with lighting presets for things like Foundry VTT, so you can just dive straight into the action. I'll leave a link for you to sign up to their Patreon in the description below, and thanks again to Che Peku for supporting the channel. Then we come to my calendar section, so my homebrew world has a dedicated calendar, so I've got a list of the months here as well as when the different seasons begin. And then next I've got a generator for weather, so I like to describe what the weather is like at the start of each session, so I'll begin the session say what the date is, tell them what the weather is at the start of their day, and this is just a hex table that I found on uh, OSR Reddit, I think, and you just roll depending on the season and it gives you the weather for that day. It's really useful. And then we get right into the calendar. Now I have this done week by week. It's a blank template where I can note down the day of the month, what month it is, what year it is. And then I use this to keep notes of what the players have done on each day. And this kind of keeps track of their adventures throughout their campaign. Next, we come to the session planning section of my notebook. Now, this is where I'll plan each and every individual session. So here we have an example of some of my session planning. This is a basic template that I use for each session. So we have the adventure number and title. Then we have the date in which players are present, 
a summary of what's going to happen in that adventure, some critical information that either I need to give to the players or that I need to be aware of as the GM, a list of any NPCs that are going to be included in the session, and then a list of the predominant loot that I know is going to be in the session. And then what I do while I'm running the game at the table is I keep this page open to reference my notes as to what's going to happen, and then I have a blank note page up and I write down what the players are doing in kind of bullet form as it's happening. You can see in those notes that I've used the multicolored pen to note down different things. So in the notes here, they dropped off the dragon's head. The dragon was a monster, so it goes in red. At Stonebrook, which is location, so that goes in blue. And then as we go down, they go to the dragon's horde, which is location in blue. And they speak to Aldrich Hallfort, character in green, and so on and so on. And then Using these notes, I note down any loot that they might find, and I also keep a note of what their plans are for the next session as well. Here you can see another version for a session that we played online, but I still planned it out in this broadly. So I noted down broadly what they were going to be doing, some critical info, some information on the NPCs that were going to be and what their loot was going to be. Then the next section I have is for session notes. This is specifically to give to my players. My players, like a lot of players, I think are really bad at taking notes at the session and then tend to forget a lot of things between sessions, especially if we miss weeks. So I made a really simple little note sheet that I hand to them at the end of each session for them to fill out. So it's got, where did we go? What did we do? Who did we meet? What did we learn and what's our next goal? And I give that to them at the end of the session for them to fill out with just really basic bullet points, but it helps for them to remember what they did, to note down. And then when we come back to the next session, I can hand that out to them for them to use as the jumping off point for the recap, and it can be really useful for that. Then I've got a couple of blank sections that I haven't filled in yet. I like to give myself plenty of space. Then I've got a section specifically for fifth edition. This isn't nearly as filled in as my Pathfinder section, because like I said, I don't play 5e as much. But here I've got a little summary of my fifth edition players and some notes on what are their kind of key abilities or what are some of the things that they can do per day or how many times they can do them. So for example, we've got the party paladin. I've got a note that he's a goliath, so he has two uses of stones endurance, which allow him to reduce income and damage by 1d12 plus one per day. Because my fifth edition game is predominantly brand new players, they're not going to remember some of these things themselves. So I want to keep a track of this so I can remind them. So I keep this up while we're playing and when it comes around to each of these characters in combat or when they're doing things in exploration mode, I've just got a little bullet point to say, hey, remember you've got this thing that might be useful in this situation. Then we've got my little 5e character sheet that I'm in the middle of working on. This is a work in progress. It's not fully finished, but I wanted to be able to make a character sheet that I could give to my 5e players for them to be able to make their own version of this kind of binder so I've been working on that so that's what this is it's got all of the key information but it's much more of a kind of form over function aesthetic focused character sheet versus the really kind of hard to pass as a new player character sheet that you get when you look at the official sheets and then I'm particularly proud of the inventory page that looks like a backpack as soon as I made that I was like this looks so good. I want everything to just fit this aesthetic forever. And I love it. And then at the back, I keep a whole bunch of different blank pages. So I've got some gridded paper to make quick maps. I've got blank paper and I've got lined paper. I really hope that you found this video inspiring and it made you want to go out and make your own GM journal. I really do think that it is a useful tool to have and it's really helped change the way that I approach my prep as a GM. I'd love to know what you think of this down below and check out my video on what I take in my GM bag when I'm running my games just over here. But until next time, happy gaming.